Hello and welcome to Intro to VR Cameras presented by Black Public Media. My name is Philip Sanchez and I'm a virtual reality producer and 360 photographer. For the past five years, I've been using VR to create doc style stories that shed more light onto social issues affecting underrepresented communities. And when I first started making VR films, you had to visit a bunch of different websites and YouTube videos to learn one small piece of what seemed like a huge puzzle of a process. And to be honest, today it's still not much better. That's why Black Public Media asked me to pull together this series on VR cameras to help you start your journey into VR. They've also commissioned my friend Jonathan Williams to dive deeper into the VR post process, so be sure to check out those videos and the rest of my Intro to VR camera series in the links below. In today's video, the seventh in our series, we're going to talk about how two closely related terms, refresh rate and frame rate, can affect your VR 360 production and presentation. Okay, so let's get started. So in keeping with our discussion on VR headsets and presentation from the last two episodes, another feature that can affect the price and quality of a VR headset, or more commonly, a new computer monitor, is the refresh rate. All displays, TVs, computer monitors, cell phones, and VR headsets are constantly updating or refreshing their pixels with the latest picture available from the device. How frequently they do that is called the refresh rate, and we measured those intervals in hertz. Your average cell phone, TV, or computer monitor have a refresh rate of 60 hertz, meaning that they refresh their display 60 times per second. Mid to higher end TVs, and now some newer gaming focused cell phones, will go up to 120 hertz. Again, they're refreshing their screens 120 times per second. Higher end computer monitors will go up to 144 or even sometimes 240 hertz. Now, if you're already familiar with film production, this may sound similar to frame rate or frames per second. And the two are closely related. As many of you probably know, all film and television is essentially a bunch of still photos that are rapidly cycled through like a flipbook, which gives the appearance of motion, hence the phrase motion picture. Each one of those photos being flipped in the flipbook can be thought of as a frame. So frame rate is how many photos are flipped per second. Where frame rate and hertz differ is on the capture and delivery side versus the display of motion picture. During capture or filming, your camera sensor and processor are what's creating each frame per second. And when you're watching footage, your phone, computer, or TV are constantly checking and refreshing for the newest picture available from the video file. Therefore, the amount of frames per second that can be displayed is capped by the number of times the display refreshes per second, or the hertz. Why this matters and how it's linked to VR is because of this. Traditional film and television are usually filmed and displayed at 24 frames per second. But in VR, we're stretching a video into a 360 degree sphere around us. Now, our eyes are quite good at perceiving motion in the periphery of our view. So in order to have a smooth playback experience, from the periphery to our center focus, especially if we're in a headset, we actually need more frames per second than if we're just watching TV. If there are too many jumps in motion between frames, our brains perceive that. And too much of that can strain our eyes and lead some people, myself included, to feelings of motion sickness. In 360 video production, it's generally recommended to film in at least 30 frames per second. However, 60 frames per second can provide an even more pleasing viewing experience. Whether your content is shot in a stationary position or mounted on a moving vehicle will also dictate your frame rate. The more fast movement you have in your scene, the higher frame rate you'll probably want to capture so that there's less jumps in movement between frames. Now, there's a huge debate on how many frames per second our eyes can actually see, and at what point do our eyes perceive no further difference? No, there's definitely a difference between 30 frames and 60 frames per second, but how much beyond that can we really perceive? It's hard to say. Uh, if you know any gamers, most of them will tell you that you need at least 90 frames per second and that 120 or 140 frames per second is actually best for optimal playback. But if you remember, the hertz or the refresh rate is our hard cap on the frames per second that can be displayed. And because high refresh rates can be a huge battery drain, most cell phones and wireless VR headsets max out at 60 to 75 hertz. So if you want the smoothest playback, you'll have to pay for a device 
or a monitor capable of those higher refresh rates. However, this is sort of a non-issue because right now we're limited by a camera hardware in 360 video. Most consumer level VR cameras make you choose between resolution or frame rate, and they'll max out at either 8K resolution at 30 frames per second, or 6K resolution at 60 frames per second. There are a few cameras out there that can do 90 or 120 frames per second, but only in 4K. And if you remember from episode three, because our field of view is roughly a quarter of the overall video dimensions, 4K resolution can be somewhat disappointing in VR. There are pro-level VR cameras capable of both high resolution and high frame rate, but they get very pricey very quickly. And really, only corded VR headsets that are directly linked to VR-ready computers with powerful graphics cards have enough juice to process and display high resolution, high frame rate content. However, because the process of decoding and displaying 360 video files is different and often more taxing than for VR game files, even these systems generally limit 360 videos to 6K resolution at 30 or 60 frames per second while animated VR games on the same systems are usually displayed at 90 to 120 frames per second. So do you need a supercomputer system to view 360 videos? No, not really. In fact, I think a wireless standalone system like the Oculus Quest 2 strikes the best balance of affordability and playback. And it's worth noting that the Quest 2 is sort of the gold standard right now when it comes to onboard sensor tracking and 360 video display. It's one of the few headsets out there at the moment that can display 8K 60 frame per second 360 video files. But I'm sure Oculus will have more competition soon, and if not, they'll come out with a new release anyways. So that's it for now. Hopefully this will inform your next VR headset or computer monitor purchase. As the quest for high frame rate and high resolution continues on the camera side, be sure you pick a display system that fits your budget but has the hurts you need with some room to grow. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.